Okay, listen. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia. Anybody that's bored, go tonight on the on, on, uh, internet and go look at Cappadocia. It's the most funny place you can find. It's beautiful. Go check it out. Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Now, I'm going to go through this, and we're going to stop at certain words. Wor- words. I'm in Germany. There is a foreknowledge of God. Foreknowledge. Knowledge. Okay, so I just want to say to everybody here, you have never surprised God. Yeah, but you don't know what I've done. Well, God knows what you've done. And by the way, he died before you've done it. And you doing it has not surprised him. So why are we forever stuck in condemnation? Yeah, but you don't know how bad you are. Can I tell you something? Quivers taught us, you don't know how bad you are. Because you're still trying to put a good... Yalla, kom, 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 kom. Het jylle al gesien as jong mense verlief is? I always look at them and I thought, when is reality going to strike? <laughs> and now, what's your problem now? The problem is not God, the problem is your kop. It's this thing. Okay. Now, God has foreknowledge. So he... Also, there's a thing in the Bible, we call it foreshadow. Foreshadow. It, it, it's shadow. It's something that is seen. Oh, do you know the thing of predestined? Predestined means my destiny is already set when I start. And the only one that can really jam it is you. Come on, we heard. The devil is dealt with. He's defeated. He's disarmed. The only thing he's got is still a mouth and it lies and it deceives all the time. And you know what? You listen to that thing. But we have to understand what Christ is. Can I read you a scripture? This is quite shocking when I read it. I think it's too John. He says, Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ... What is Christ, that anointing? Have not God, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, hath both the Father and the Son. If anybody come to you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. Ooh. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood. Of Jesus Christ, grace be unto you, and peace be multiplied. Come on, we heard that peace thing today. Mm, I like that. Because of Christ's obedience, you know what's the doctrine of Christ? Not prosperity. No man, prosperity is a benefit. It's a benefit, it's not a doctrine. This is the problem. We've changed Benefits to doctrine in us jagons mugdana. But the doctrine of Christ is humbleness and obedience, and the others will follow. Humbleness and obedience. And because of that, we have grace. He said the law came by Moses, but with Christ, grace and truth. Now Jesus came and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't come to bring the way. (laughs) He didn't come to show the truth. He didn't come and he dished little life packets out. No. He is it. Come on. (laughs) Satan has always tried to get us away from the finished work on the cross. God knew exactly what he did when he sent his son to this earth. And if he thought this was it, I will not change it. He is the way. He is the truth. 
He is the life. This is the way. This is the life. He gave his life so that I can have this life. Okay, we're going to go a little bit slowly through this. So grace has come unto us. But now, if you go back to John 1, he says, out of his fullness, we have received grace for grace. Come on, I have preached this year. There's two graces, and it's brought to us. We're going to get there later. It says here, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again because of Christ to a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ from the dead. The Message Bible says, Christ's resurrection is the signal of death as the end. It's the end of death as the end. So when Christ was raised, what? Something popped up inside of us. There's a hope that is alive. What is this hope? (laughs) 1 Timothy says, Christ is our hope. But it's not a Christ on the outside. It is a Christ that is put right inside of us. And this has come right from the beginning. Because just before the flood, just before the flood, which was the end of the first world, God said, my spirit will not forever strive with man. And he brought the flood and he gave the bow in the air and said, never again will this happen. And this ark that was there with eight people could not land before the dove found a landing, and they knew he found a landing when he had a little olive tree, an olive, meaning that the anointing is going to come down on the earth, and the second world was started here. In Moses, God gave them the commands of life. They broke it before they even got it, and he broke all ten commandments, one shot, But, but God's commands has never changed. So this command was put in a system which was to show the way to Christ. It was a shadow of the heavenly. And this was added to that and that was placed inside that and they carried it around. And God's commands has never, ever, ever changed. I shared it this morning with you. He says in John, a new commandment I've given you. Oh no, it's not a new commandment. It's the old one that was from the beginning. But now, (laughs) it's not you in the tabernacle trying to do it. Now, it's in you and in Christ. And now the only thing you can do for God is embrace what God has done for you. Are you with me? There is now, because of Christ, because of Christ's resurrection, something has happened on this side that is called hope. Hope. We have a hope that it's a lively hope. Listen to this. He says, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and it fades not away, and it's reserved in heaven for us. Okay, somewhere beyond the blue, no, we know, mm-mm, that's not anymore. Jesus became the door that was opened in heaven. You don't climb through a door like that, you walk through a door. So there is something that you have to decide right here to walk through. It's not something you can do. You must just walk through it because you can't take your own will through that. It is he is the door and he died. Come on. He was the forerunner that went right within the veil 
And he opened the door for us unto the spirit realm. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, Jesus, he's all you need. Come on, have you ever felt like, if only something can happen to me? Yeah, to you. You have to get your mind there. I'm sorry, guys. We are to be supernatural, not weird. I'm going to explain it. Because God came, and when his spirit came on us, I didn't, my body didn't change, I didn't change, but I know something happened on me. But that was just the beginning. And that what happened is actually my hope to where I'm going. Listen, we are busy with a conference of revealing the glory. Now, I realize in my life that I've just tried to stay out of insanity. Because all we are aware of is all our trouble around us. Come on. If we ask for people to come out and say, can we pray for you? You sometimes can't even hear what people say. They just, (laughs) trouble. You try to give them the word. They don't listen. Trouble. (laughs) So there is a, a thing that we have to stop and realize what has happened to us. He says, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, we've got, to, we've got to jump back way back here. Moses is the first guy that said, God, show me your glory. And something very funny happened to God. He, he turned all funny. Because Exodus 33, 11 God and Moses are sitting on this mountain. They were sitting face to face on a mountain. Like friends. They were sitting around like friends. God, you want me to take these Jews through the desert? Huh? Your presence, please. He asked for God's presence. And you know what he said? He said, because you know my name. What was his name? The earth was just destroyed with water. Moses' name means drawn from water. Moses is knocking and he says, I have purpose. He finally realized he has purpose. And this is where we are tonight. We have to realize the purposes of God in our hearts. Okay. And you know what he did to say? He said, I have found grace. Rarach, grace. Grace came by Jesus Christ. Okay, here we don't understand what's going on. How can Moses find grace? Do you know David also found grace? Do you know Abraham found grace? What's going on here? God has always been and always will be a God of grace and a God of mercy. Do you know what is grace? You don't get what you do deserve. You know what's mercy? You don't get what you do deserve. So it's from both sides. Grace is, you get what you don't deserve. Mercy is, you don't get what you do deserve. What more do you want? Okay. But God's grace has always been there. But Romans 3.23 says, In Adam, in Adam, all have sinned and lost the glory. Everybody say, they lost the glory. They fell short of the glory. They they never had it. They they missed it. Because there was true trees and they could have eaten from the right one. And they went for the wrong one. Because it's only the entrance of the word that brings life. He says from Adam to Moses, death reigned. Come on, small, come via sure. Death, there was no way out to see death. Now this was the king. 
death reigned. When Moses said, show me your glory, it stopped reigning. Death was stopped reigning from here. And something happened here that death could not have free reign on everybody. But whatever happened here did not bring life. You get it? So grace, the glory was lost here. But I want to say there was also a river that fed. And this was always, always has it been there. So grace has always been there. That is why you have in Hebrews 11, heroes of faith before the cross. Grace and faith came by Christ. We have to sort of find out where we are in this. So Moses says, I have found grace. Show me your way. Come on. Jesus is the way. What is he doing? He says, I have purpose. <laughs> I have purpose. Where am I going? What I'm trying to do tonight to every one of you, you're not just alive and you're not just here for nothing. You have purpose. You just have to find out where you are and where you're going. Come on. Jesus came and he said, I know where I'm come from and I know where I'm going. But our problem is we do not know where we come from and we do not know where we go. And the time of ignorance is over. Because we live in the bestest time. What time are we living in? Habakkuk 2, 14 says, The knowledge of the glory of God is going to fill the earth like the waters cover the sea. And where is this knowledge? It's Christ in us. The hope of glory. So who's walking with the key to unlock this? You. Hope is not wishing. Hope is a real living thing. And it's right inside of me. And it's, I'm pregnant. It's not that I'm pushed. I'm pulled towards my destiny. But we have to find out. And there's too many people that actually have miscarriages on this. Because we think we're just Christians. You know, I'm born again. I'm whoop, saved from hell. I didn't burn. I'm going to heaven. No, no. God has got a purpose. Everybody say purpose. God has got a purpose for us right here. And we have to find out our timing and our purpose. So yeah, all of a sudden, Moses finds out his purpose. He says, show me your way. Show me your way. God says, I know your name and I know you've found grace. My presence will go with you. Moses is not, there must be more. And he turns around face to face with God. He says, show me. I think, I think he had a little sparkle in his eye. God, we all sinned. One man sinned and we all fell and we've got no hope. We've lost the glory. Show me your glory. And everything changes on that mountain. I want you to see it. God said, Moses, my goodness will come past you. Everybody say pass. It's going to come from there to there. My goodness will right pass you. And I will be gracious. He said, he screamed his name before the goodness. I will be gracious on whom I will be gracious. I will be merciful on whom I will be merciful. <laughs> God has a purpose and a plan for literally everyone. Because in Revelation, when he talks about the sea, he talks about people. He says, the glory is going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. It doesn't mean if you, oh, you're only the gardener in spirit word. You know, you're not so important as that woman there in front. No, no, no. 
No, everyone's part is important for God. And that is his dream and his purpose for us. But you see, we haven't been taught this. And we do not understand the time we're in. And we're getting bored with our problems. Sometimes these things happen to us to wake us up. And what we do is, now we squeal about it. Stop fighting the fire and be an overcomer. These things push you to your destiny. I had one awesome life with Quibbers for Innsbruck. I think if only I knew what I had when I had it. I want you to hear my heart. I want you to hear my heart. Well, Annalise is strong. No, she's a human being like you. But somewhere you have to decide, I'm going to follow Jesus and I'm not looking back. Do we believe what we believe? Do I belittle? No. This is honoring because I'm taking what he preached. When I saw a vision of him, I, I can remember my mind says, oh my word, what we preach is truth. Maybe we should believe it. Okay, we are on this mountain. Goodness is going to pass. Then God said something weird. He said, Moses was asking for the glory. God said to him, you cannot see my face. For no man can see my face and live. I'm like, rarach. And then I looked up the words. Face have two meanings. The one is my face. The other one is the front side. The front side. God said, my goodness will pass by you. But my front side, you cannot see. Why? <laughs> because I'm only showing you what my plan is. But you cannot be in my plan. Because my spirit is going to come. And not come on the earth and leave. Come on the earth and leave. John said, on him who you see the spirit come and stay. Oh my gosh. My friend John, I claim John as my friend because he was my husband's best friend. He's really my friend. I really count him as my friend. He preached, he said, the purpose of the cross is the spirit. I want to take it right back. The purpose of the seed, there was a battle for seed, was bodies. So the purpose for the seed was a body. The purpose for the body was the cross. And the purpose for the cross is the spirit. And the purpose for the spirit in you is the glory restored. So if you can find out where you are, do you know that everything that this word has carried since creation is for this time that we are in. The glory of God is going to fill the earth. Okay. Remember the former things of old. For I am God. There is none else. I am God. And there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. And I think the angels went bah, to the devil. <laughs> my counsel shall stand. He says, my word is forever settled in the heavens. Yeah. Come on, guys. What did he say? From the beginning, right to the end, it's already planned. No, 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 no. Come on. So the book of Genesis ends in Revelation. And the book of Revelation starts in Genesis. And we don't understand what is going on. So tonight, I'm going to do a timeline, short, short, that you can... <laughs> <laughs> I want you to understand the times that you are in. Because it says in Hebrews 10, in the volume of the book, 
It's written, I've come to do your will. I've come to remove the old. A body is prepared. And then he talks about Christ once offered. Come on. Sets us free. What on earth are we looking for? He says, I read it over and over. A new commandment I've given you. Oh, sorry guys, it's not a new commandment. It's the old one that was from the beginning. But now it's new because of the cross. I've said it already. But you see, we think we must now discover God is not cuckoos. He didn't go all over the show. And every time a human failed him, we talk about Adam failing. God said, I want you to rule and reign. Have dominion. He never changed. Then they lost the glory. They fell short of the glory. The command was still there. Then he came to Cain. He said, sin is lurking. Same thing as Eve had. What did he do? He messed up. He calls it in Hebrews 11. He says there's a habitable world. And he came to this habitable world. <laughs> Creation. Everything was made for our glory. For just, just for gold that you can get married to be here. It needed white dwarf explosions and great explosions and different explosions just to get gold on meteorites to land on the earth so you can get married with a golden ring. Everything's prepared for you. 